Oops, you have to put the CD in your computer. LEGO Island launched an amazing franchise of games based on the LEGO construction toys. It featured open-world gameplay, interesting characters, easy-to-learn controls, and a playful story that came together to make a child's perfect game. So how did this whole thing start? Let's find out. E video game? The year is 1983, and video games are crashing. So hard, in fact, that there's a whole Wikipedia article about it. It's also the reason why Atari buried hundreds of thousands of their own games in the middle of the Chihuahuan Desert in Alamogordo, New Mexico. The crash was huge. Nobody wanted to touch video games. Nobody wanted to trust video games. Thankfully, Nintendo both wanted to touch and trust video games. It may be the most addictive toy in history, and it's definitely the hottest thing this Christmas. Nintendo Video Games. The launch of the Nintendo Entertainment System revitalized the video game industry enough, toy makers were starting to get concerned. One of these toy makers was the LEGO Group, and I'm sure you've heard of them. LEGO is here! Hey, kids, look! According to the LEGO sanctioned Bits and Bricks podcast on Season 1, Episode 4, the LEGO company feared Nintendo, quote, the LEGO Group has started to worry about the impact Nintendo and video games were having on the toy business. The company feared that video games were taking up an increasingly large amount of a child's free time." End quote. So in 1995, LEGO charged their head of marketing at the time, Tormund Askelson, to look into entering the video game space. Askelson formed a team and put together a report codenamed Elvis during the fall of that year. Askelson presented his findings on December 21st, 1995, during a company workshop. The same Bits and Bricks podcast says the report, quote, stresses that entering the video game market was not an option, it was an absolute necessity. But even before LEGO put Tormund and team to the task, a video game developer in the US was already looking for a partner in the toy industry to work with. Mindscape was a growing edutainment software company based in California founded by Roger Bowie in 1983. Mindscape had previous development success with games such as The Terminator, Deja Vu, and Paperboy 2. They also published one of my personal favorite games, Dragon Lore The Legend Begins. Oh boy. Thank you, stranger. That scorpion's been coming here for many days. Back to Lego. Wes Jenkins and Paul Melmed were hired by Mindscape, and the two developed a pitch for LEGO based on the town theme of LEGO sets. The site of their final pitch? Toy Fair 1995 in New York City. Now if we take a look at our timeline here, we know that LEGO was pitched by Mindscape in February of 1995 at the New York City Toy Fair. In the fall of 95, they asked Askelson to see what these video games were all about, presumably spurred by Mindscape's pitch. And then in December, they hear the Elvis report. We would assume that the announcement of LEGO Island would come next, but actually, LEGO released their very first game in the same month that they heard the findings. December 1995. LEGO Fun to Build was released for the Sega Pico Education Console. You may be curious as to why you've never heard of it, and that's because the game was only released in Japan, despite the Pico being available in North America. Fun to Build offered several levels of building puzzles as well as a few mini-games. This game was developed by Sega and published by LEGO, seemingly as a small way to test the viability of brick building in the virtual world. The LEGO Toy Company and Mindscape team up to create CD-ROM game. Novato, California, January 27, 1996, the LEGO Toy Company makers of the world's best-selling construction toys and Mindscape Inc., a leading publisher of consumer computer software, today announced that they have entered into an agreement to develop and market a CD-ROM game for children under the LEGO brand name. The development of LEGO Island was in full swing. Taking on the role of creative director was Wes Jenkins, who was at the New York City Toy Fair, and the other was Paul Melmid, who became the research and education director. Melmid wanted the game to be designed around Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences theory, with each playable character embodying one of the intelligences. For those of you not aware, the theory boils down to the fact that people don't have one general intelligence we are all born with, but there are multiple areas in which a person can be intelligent. 
While the final game didn't end up including all of Gardner's intelligences, all five of the main characters and two NPCs represent them. During development, the team put together a physical version of the titular Lego Island and asked kids to play with it. The team observed which activities kids gravitated towards in order to pick out what to focus on in the game. My wife and I built it together, which was a lot of fun, as you can imagine. The team would have focus tests with kids to ask how they would play and all which we tried to incorporate. The island model was built before you built it on the computer. The team put together their own engine for the game with the hope that they would save time on producing any sequels. They also included the ability for the game to use a graphics accelerator if you had one, but it was no detriment if your computer didn't. During the development, LEGO started LEGO Media as its own video game division, as well as Darwin, a new strategic product unit. LEGO Media and Darwin met with Mindscape and helped to expand the scope of the game. This included new buildings and vehicles, and the exclusion of non-LEGO elements such as ropes. As release day neared, the whole team was excited. Bonuses were to be paid out on a release day as an incentive for seeing the project through, as the industry at the time had quite a high turnaround. But it seems Mindscape only employed this tactic maliciously. The day before the game was released, they laid off the entire staff, removing their ability to get bonuses. In the same interview with Wes, he says, Long story, but basically, the industry tradition back then was that you will receive product bonuses if you stay to the day of product release. The best solution for them at the time was to fire everybody the day before release. There's bigger profits if you don't have to pay bonuses or continued salaries. The final LEGO Island featured 13 areas, over 30 NPCs, 8 vehicles, and 2 endings. While it was missing some stuff they hoped to get in, like entering every building, they still had a winner on their hands. LEGO Island was one of the first PC games I ever played. Its open gameplay made it easy for kids to dive into any part they wanted to without feeling like they needed to wade through games they didn't enjoy. The Brickster is a great villain, and the entire story keeps the fun and playful atmosphere of LEGO the entire time. It's an achievement in the early edutainment days and helped start one of the most successful toy making ventures in video games. Hey, you caught me pretending to take a poop. If you liked our video, you should like, comment, and subscribe on it. That way, YouTube knows we're awesome. Do it. I gotta wait.